In the comments section of one of my recent videos, a subscriber asked a very interesting question. He asked whether growth hormone treatment, meaning using exogenous growth hormone, would blunt our own growth hormone secretion. In a similar way to, for example, if you went on testosterone replacement, you may find that your gonadal synthesis of testosterone decreases. In this video, I'm going to answer that question. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you haven't already, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. The long and short of it is that growth hormone treatment blunts natural growth hormone secretion. But to learn more about this, let's review three studies beginning with a study by Lanzi and Tannenbaum from 1992. In this study on rats, the authors found that a single growth hormone injection inhibited growth hormone secretion for a four to eight hour period thereafter. Keep in mind that in rodents, time is, like if you have, want to transfer the time to humans, you have to double it or triple it. So there's a long decrease in growth hormone secretion from a single injection of, in this case, human growth hormone in rats. They also found that uh, multiple injections over a five-day period, so chronic growth hormone treatment, not that long, but over a five-day period did the same thing. Recovery of natural growth hormone secretion happened within 48 hours and was quite robust. They also found that the inhibition was due to somatostatin. As some of you may know, somatostatin is the natural inhibitory signal to the GHRH signal that produces growth hormone secretion. GHRH is growth hormone releasing hormone. It's inhibited by somatostatin, both in the brain and in the periphery. In 1996, Lopez et al. performed a very interesting study on adult rats and aging rats. So adult rats were 90 day old and uh, aging rats were two years old, which is sort of the end of their life. So you can think of the elderly people. In this study, they found that in the 90 uh, day old rats, growth hormone treatment inhibited endogenous growth hormone secretion. In the two-year-old rats, they were unable to tell because the two-year-old rats had such low natural pulsatile growth hormone secretion. What they did find was that human growth hormone treatment in these rats inhibited growth hormone gene expression in the pituitary. Remember the growth hormone releasing hormone is released by the hypothalamus and then the pituitary signals for the secretion of growth hormone. They also found that protein expression of somatostatin, the inhibitor toward growth hormone secretion was increased in the brain as well as IGF-1 protein expression was also increased in the brain. To get more into the molecular and anatomical level of the mechanisms by which this happens, let's look at a paper from 1998 by Minami et al. What Minami et al. found was that GH treatment reduced GH secretion by directly, the growth hormone directly acting, transferring through the blood-brain barrier and acting on uh, neuropeptide Y neurons and somatostatin neurons in the brain, thereby increasing somatostatin secretion, the inhibitory hormone that inhibits the release of growth hormone. So what does this all mean practically? Well, it means that if you supplement with growth hormone, similar to if you supplement with testosterone, you will inhibit your endogenous synthesis of growth hormone. Does this matter? It does matter because if you're supplementing with a very low amount of growth hormone, you have to weigh whether you're actually ending up with a net benefit. So in our brains, in our pituitaries, we produce several molecular weight versions of growth hormone that act slightly differently. When you inject growth hormone, you only get one kind of growth hormone that acts in one particular way. Well, many ways, but it's not the same as the other forms of growth hormone. So when you inject growth hormone, first of all, you have to consider the dose because you're inhibiting some of your own growth hormone synthesis. And second, you have to consider the fact that you've now just, if you dose it enough, just inhibited the different molecular weight versions of growth hormone that you would naturally produce. How can you avoid this? By using something like MK677. Not all growth hormone releasing analogs work. Some are inhibited by somatostatin, but the ghrelin mimetics like MK677 are not inhibited by somatostatin. So if you take MK677 with your growth hormone, your brain will continue to produce growth hormone, potentially at higher levels than it normally does, and it will produce the various molecular weights which are important and integral for the functions of growth hormone in the body. I think this is the first time this has ever been discussed in a video. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys. I look forward to seeing you next time.